This is lesson three of unlocking parametric families. In this lesson, we'll start the process of making this overall door family. And for this lesson, we're specifically just going to make a singular a basic flush door panel. So not the entire door assembly with the frame and, and the hardware, but just the actual door leaf and just a simple one at that. So we can start by uh, going to open up a new type of family. And we can see here that we're in the uh, family types uh, template folder, uh, the basic Revit out of the box one. Additionally, you can go to the uh, content folder and open up the O3 begin file to get started. So we're making a door family. So logic kind of dictates that we should click the uh, door family template to get started. Now, this isn't exactly what I want to do, but I'm going to do it anyway and, and review why uh, this isn't the decision we want to make. So let's open it up. And we can see in this uh, family template for this door family that there's a wall and then there's a frame and then there's the opening for the door. Well, so we're making a, a door leaf right now, not the overall family. So I want my overall door uh, to carry these functions, but for a specific door leaf, I don't. And this wall acts as a host. So when I do all my door geometry, it gets hosted inside of a wall and it cuts inside of the wall and it's placed inside of the wall. But again, I'm just making a specific door leaf, just the geometry part. And we're going to uh, work later on creating this door frame inside of this host wall. So let's back out of this and we'll open up a new uh, family template. So this new family type that I want to make uh, is going to be generic model. And we want generic model because it's just a simple geometry. And again, we're just making the door panel, not the frame and everything else. So I just need uh, something to model. But I'm not actually going to start with the generic model. I'm going to trick you guys again. And we're going to start with specialty equipment. And the reason I want to do that is because the specialty equipment family, uh, once I get inside of it, you can see uh, starts with just this very simple set of reference planes. It's very simple. There's no extra planes. There's no extra dimensions. There's no locks. It's very simple. And once I'm in it, I can click on this uh, category folder up here for the family categories. And if I wanted to, I could change it to be any other type of family, uh, like a door family or, or something else. And so here, I'm going to go ahead and set uh, the generic model. Um, if you're doing other families for other projects, I recommend starting with the, spe uh, the specialty equipment family because it's very basic. And it won't have any weird referen reference plane locks, reference plane names that might be confusing. So now that we've done that, I want to go ahead and start making uh, my actual uh, geometry, my actual planes to set up this family. So I'm going to use the uh, reference plane uh, command. Uh, there's a shortcut for RR, which I've set up, but the tool for it's right up here. Let's use RR. And I want to just start drawing a couple of reference planes to define the actual door panel itself. And under the Properties tab, I'm going to click on each one of these planes and set what the reference is. And this is a good practice to do. Because when you name these references and set it, uh, this is reference parameter to something, it allows you to actually select it when you're in uh, the project or in, in another family that this family is nested in. Uh, it's just a good practice to get into. Uh, I highly recommend it just so you can see the reference planes uh, when you're in the project. And when we get to uh, for a little further down the line, I'll show you what that means. So now that I've done that, what I want to do next is use the uh, dimension tool. I use the shortcut DD. That's what mine's set to, but it, under annotate, you can click uh, an align dimension. And let's quickly just uh, create some equals because I want, again, this center set of reference planes to be the, the midpoint of this entire geometry. Let's set these to, to that. And then I want to create some overall dimensions for this. And now what I want these dimensions to do are to control the width and the thickness. So to create a parameter, I can go to this family types and I can click add. And I'm going to do a uh, width parameter. I'm just going to call it width. And we want it to be a length parameter. And we'll leave it as type. And I'll explain those uh, going forward. And maybe let's set this to three feet. And additionally, let's go ahead and make a, uh, a height and a thickness as well. So we'll make thickness. And we'll make a height parameter as well. And all I did each time was just click that add parameter to do that. And maybe we can move the order. Maybe I like width, height, thickness. So the height, let's do a standard seven foot door and that thickness. Most doors usually come in at one and three quarters inches uh, in thickness. And let's hit okay. 
So notice nothing changed. It's because I have to assign that parameter to one of these dimensions. So let's click on this, and in this label box up here, I can choose those parameters. You can see how they have come into this selection now. So let's do that. And notice how quickly that kind of updated to that three-foot dimension. If I choose this one and set thickness to it, uh, the same thing happens, which is really great. And that's that's the power of, of Revit. Now, the reason I did reference planes and not geometry was because reference planes are, are really easy for Revit to control, and they function pretty pretty smoothly. And what we like to do is typically lock geometry to these reference planes because these reference planes uh, act a little bit more smoothly than just setting dimensions to geometry. So now that I've assigned the uh, width and the thickness, let's uh, maybe go to an elevation. Let's go to that front view. And let's assign a, a top as well. So let's create another reference plane. I used my RR shortcut. And let's do a dimension. And let's click on that reference plane and give it some properties first. Let's call this top. And then finally, let's assign that parameter for the height that we made. And there we go. That looks good. Let's close out so we can get back into the plan view. Now what I want to do next is uh, what we call uh, flexing. Uh, flexing. If I move this family types dialog over for us, and I'm going to hit OK and, and move this over so we can kind of see what's going on. And let's open that family types back up. Uh, in Revit, we in family editing in Revit, we do flexing a lot. It's where we test the parameter and flex it to see if it works properly. So if I do this, I can see that that width actually opened up pretty nicely, which which means it's working well. And, Ideally, I would test some of these other parameters and make sure they're working well, which it looks like it is. So uh, I'm not too worried about these ones. And I know the height one's working well because that's pretty simple. So now that we've flexed it, let's go ahead and make our geometry. So we're going to go to the Create tab. And for this geometry, we're just going to use an extrusion, uh, which is just a, a shape that's extruded vertically. And we'll do our box. And what I usually like to do is I usually like to just draw the shape away from the planes. And then I actually align the geometry to those planes and lock it. So I'm going to use my align tool. It's up here. I have my shortcut AA, so I'll click AA. And I'll click the reference plane. I'll click the geometry, and I'll lock it. So that way I know that that geometry is now locked to that plane. And those planes are controlled by those parameters. So now I know that the geometry is going to be controlled by the parameters. So let's hit finish. And again, let's move this over. Let's go back to the family types. And let's flex. You can see the outline of the geometry in there. And if I change these dimensions, I can see that geometry gets updated accordingly as well, which is great. It's working great. Now let's go to the uh, front view and make sure the front of the door is, is lined up. Now right now it's not, so let's use our align tool again. And let's align it, and let's hit lock, and let's test it, let's flex it, let's change the height, works good, let's go back to 7 feet, works good as well. So it looks like we have the dimensions uh, set up pretty good for this uh, family, and we have our simple flush door. Now let's go ahead and assign a uh, material parameter to it. Now I can go back to the family types and click an add parameter and I can assign uh, a type of parameter. I can do a material parameter. But one thing we can do as well is click on the geometry and go to our instance parameters and we can see the material and then there's this little build button off to the right and this is where you can see that little uh, message popped up that says associate family parameters. So let's click on that and in this dialog I can add a parameter and it brings me right back to the add parameter one. So let's call this the material door panel. I like that. And by default, it sets as the right type of parameter, which is good. So let's hit OK and let's hit OK. And now I've assigned a material parameter where I can, in the future, when in my project, uh, give it a material uh, and flex that material. Uh, so that's great. So what I want to do now is just go ahead and, and save this. Let's do a file, save as. And let's save this as uh, D1 underscore flush door. It's kind of auto-populating because I already have one, but this will be the first time you save it. So save it as D1 flush door. And as you saw in that door schedule uh, from lesson two, uh, we're naming it like this so that it will auto-populate for us. So there's specific naming 
that we want to see in the schedule. And we're going to create a parameter that allows uh, just selecting this type of door panel to populate that schedule for us. So go ahead and do the D1 flush door and hit save and we'll replace it. So in the next lesson, we're going to make our next type of uh, door panel. We have a couple more that we need to make and we'll start making those in the next lesson.